Well, good day. It is the the ninth day of June, 2021. This is a a, a story that sounds fake, but is a hundred percent true. It's almost like something out of a. Uh, it's unbelievable, to be quite honest with you. Uh, it's a story of a man who conned the FBI, the DEA, and the ATF uh, into allowing their agencies to sponsor seminars that he put on uh, for employees, new agents at the FBI Academy in Quantico, retiring agents, uh, to convince them that uh, he knew a lot about financial investments and that if you invested money with him, uh, you would do very well. And on paper, on paper they did do very well. But uh, one thing that the government is very good at is kind of covering their tracks when something really embarrassing happens. I looked through the internet to try to find just an old video on this and I can't find one. There are none. They've scrubbed it completely. But this is true. So uh, take a look at this and, uh, you know, we'll talk about it shortly afterward. And here is the man, Kenneth Wayne McLeod, uh, now deceased. Uh, but a little bit of story on how he fooled the FBI, DEA, and ATF agents and their management. The only con man that we know of invited to present seminars at the FBI Academy and you know it's not surprising he had all the toys well how did this thing start well the evolution of a scam the man was broke in the early 90s now in the 1997 he formed an asset management group to cater to the financial needs of federal employees particularly law enforcement and he sold seminars and encouraged agents of the DEA and FBI and ATF uh, to invest money in a fund that he called the FEBG bond fund. Now this should set off the first red flag because anyone who's in the TSP, the Thrift Savings Program, knows there's a government fund, the government bond fund. It pays about 1% if that a year. He said it would pay between 6 to 8% with your, with your returns guaranteed by the government. Now with interest rates as low as they were, there's no way, but a lot of people believed him. And he was very successful in instilling confidence. And by 2005, he had over $30 million under management. And he owned two mansions, a yacht, and luxury cars. So what's wrong with that? Well, here it is. You know, number one, he had no financial credentials. His degrees were fraudulent. Number two, FEBG bond fund, it was a Ponzi scheme. What in the heck is a Ponzi scheme? It is money that you take from somebody and pay the person uh, who was in the, the program before. It's a pyramid scheme. So the new entrants, the new people that you con, give you money, and then you pay interest on the people you conned previously, and you pocket a lot of it. And on paper, it looks like their investments are growing and growing, so they, they don't really see anything. And of course, number three, there's, there's no bond fund guaranteed by the government that, that guarantees a return of six to 8% per annum uh, just doesn't happen. So how did he do what he did? Well, how did he get the uh, confidence of DEA supervisors? He would come to special agent in charge conferences and at them he would write checks, good checks, huge amounts of money to the DEA Survivor Benefits Fund. Now what is that? That's a fund that, that goes to the wives or spouses and children of agents who are killed in the line of duty. Okay, so that, that's a good thing that he did. Of course, he's doing a good thing for a bad reason. And that was his ticket. You know, he was allowed to present seminars at the FBI Academy to new agents and those nearing retirement. And here's what else he did, and, you know, big surprise. He provided expensive tickets to include, uh, expensive gifts to include Super Bowl tickets, vacations, and other freebies to DEA executives. And ultimately, he convinced a number of agents, and including, I think, a federal judge who was involved as well, uh, up to $33 million in his bond fund. Well, what happened? Well, in 2008, for those of you who don't know, the housing market crashed. The government uh, started printing money. Uh, it, it was a real terrible time. 
and people wanted their money back. And uh, in a lot of cases, they needed their money back because they had perhaps taken out uh, home equity loans and they were now underwater, which means that their houses, they owe more money than their house was worth. And uh, so they, they went and they wanted their money back. And of course, when you have a Ponzi scheme, <laughs> you can't give everyone their money back at once because it doesn't work that way. Uh, well, what one agent did is he contacted the Securities and Exchange Commission in D.C. And, of course, they were a little bit skeptical. They said, send us his promotional materials, his emails. Um, and, you know, it's probably just a guy that's lost money in the market. And it's tough, tough toenails. You lose money in the market. But this agent sent everything to them, and that piqued their interest because there were things in there that the SEC agents know do not exist, such as an FEBG bond fund that offers a guaranteed 6 to 8% on a government insured bond just doesn't happen. So the SEC special agents call Wayne McLeod, Kenneth Wayne McLeod, and they say, they talk to him a little bit and they say, by the way, what is this FEBG bond fund that you've got? And he goes, I, I have no such thing. Well, of course they had the promotional material right there, so he just lied to them. They said, what we would like to do, you know, we're gonna come down to Jacksonville, which is where he lived, and, uh, you know, we need to really talk to you about this because there are people trying to get their money back. And uh, we have inf information to the contrary of what you've said. So, again, we regulate your company. Your company is registered with us. So it's a regulatory interview, but you can bring your lawyer. We'll meet with you on Monday. And this was a Friday. And, of course... Uh, the agents did travel to Jacksonville and realizing that he had been caught, uh, McLeod sent an email to investors and committed suicide. The fund was frozen and investigated and hundreds of investors <laughs> lost over $30 million, ranging in individual losses from $10,000 to $1.4 million. And the Office of Inspector General did a report on DEA's relationship with this guy. And, uh, you know, they failed to adequately vet his credentials before allowing him to teach in DEA facilities, okay? They allowed him to promote his business in violations of OPM guidelines. Um, they permitted DEA divisions to use unapproved vendors. And they allowed his financial uh, contributions to the survivor benefit fund to influence his use as an instructor and here it shows you know how much that uh, people lost about 30 million dollars and uh, you know for a lot of people that was now what really sets me off about this whole thing is that several special agents in charge were awarded or given Super Bowl tickets by this clown and um, nothing really happened to them they were allowed to retire which I don't think it was fair. You know, I think they should have lost their pensions uh, because taking gifts from vendors is a big no-no. But what do you learn from this? Remember always, you know, if someone is a financial advisor, you run a very simple check on them, a FINRA check, which shows that they have the credentials that they say they have, that they didn't, you know, go to night school at the YMCA to get a high school diploma. If the guy says he's got a master's degree in business, he actually has one. Second thing, become financially literate. You know, a minimal understanding of the stock and bond market would have caused any prudent person to be dubious of his claims. And three, if you get a federal job and if you become a supervisory agent, you don't take stuff from vendors, okay? That's a bad idea. <laughs> and uh, they did. And, um, you know, the you know, the, the people involved lost a lot of money. They tried to sue the government. The suit was un, uh, unsuccessful. It was thrown out of court. And the reason they tried to sue the government, the, the people who lost money, was that the government, again, allowed him to use government facilities to uh, put forth his uh, financial advice and to promote his business, which was, was unlawful. But the lawsuit was not successful, so... They were out their money. So that's it. You know, Kenneth Wayne McLeod uh, built agents, FBI and DE agents, and ATF agents out of about a total of $30 million of their personal money. 
by telling them that he had a bond fund that was guaranteed by the federal government that would return six to eight percent. Um, and the academies allowed him in, the FBI Academy allowed him in, he was at Glencoe, he would go to retirement seminars. You would think someone would do a check. Well, here is here is the the, the lesson of this. You know, whenever you have someone who says that they're a financial advisor, do what's called a FINRA check, which checks their credentials, because this guy had no credentials. I don't think he even graduated high school. What he had was the gift of gab, and he had a lot of toys, a beautiful house, two beautiful houses, a yacht, sports cars, but it was all funded by money that people were investing and of course, you would pay off the previous investors with that, a classic pyramid scheme. So again, this is a cautionary tale, you know? If they can get taken, if the special agent in charge of the academy can get fooled, the FBI academy, uh, you know, there's certain things you need to know. So you need to be financially literate, that's one thing. And then the second thing, you know, also important, besides being financially literate, um, you know, you just need to do your homework on anyone who says that they're a financial investor because anybody can claim that they're a financial investor. And, uh, you know, this guy is basically a mini Madoff. The only difference is he went right to law enforcement and uh, got money from law enforcement agents who are, you know, supposed to be the most elite and well-trained people in the government. It took the SEC's Securities Exchange Commission, special agents to catch him. So hopefully it's been entertaining, but also informative and, um, you know, and also a cautionary tale as to what, what not to do. Learn a little bit about stocks and bonds. Take some finance classes if you're still in college. Learn a little bit about this stuff because a lot of people didn't. They tried to sue the government after he committed suicide. And of course, that was all unsuccessful. The government said, you know, you lost your money, basically. You were conned out of it. You know, there's... The government is not responsible. Even if they allowed him, gave him a platform, which is what they did, um, they denied responsibility. So again, you know, when it comes to your own finances, there's no one who can watch it like you can, okay? Hope you have a good day.